Hi and welcome to my new channel, The Reluctant Photographer. Today we're going to take a look at this camera, the Kodak Hawkeye Number no. 2 Model C. Before we get into looking at the camera, camera in a bit more detail, I thought I'd just go into uh, uh, the brief history of this camera. Uh, Kodak first used the Hawkeye name in 1899, but it wasn't the first company to actually use that. That was uh, the Boston Camera Company, and they introduced it uh, in the late 1880s. Uh, and that particular Hawkeye camera was a wooden box camera uh, shooting um, 4x5 glass plates. And the Boston Camera Company was then taken over by the Blair Cam Camera Company, also based in Boston. And they also had uh, a Hawkeye camera, which was more akin to this type of uh, box camera. Um, the Blair Camera Company uh, was then taken over by Kodak, who uh, relocated the Blair Camera Company to New York, in Ro Rochester in New York and they carried on producing their Hawkeye camera. It wasn't until later on um, that the Hawkeye name was attributed to a brand new box camera and this is one of them. Let's run through the specifications of this uh, camera. It was introduced in 1926 and ran all the way uh, up until 1934. It uses a 120 roll film format and shoots 6x9 or 2 and a quarter by 3 and a quarter inch if you're into your Imperials. Um, it's got a single speed rotary shutter that I couldn't find any accurate um, information on the actual speed but it's reckoned to be around 1 30th of a second uh, and it's only got that one speed. Uh, also the aperture is a single aperture and that is according to the information I could find uh, is uh, f11. Uh, it has a menis meniscus lens and a rotary uh, shutter and that's it. Okay let's have a look at the functioning of the camera. Uh, it's, as you expect, a very simple camera. Here in the front we've got uh, the rotary shutter behind which is the lens. Uh, we've got the viewing lens there and there is the ground glass or etched glass uh, viewing window. Uh, and the, the image is projected via a, a silvered mirror. As you can see the viewfinder on this camera is a very simple affair. Right at the front of the camera we've got uh, a lens and the image is projected the right way up onto a ground glass screen via a 45 degree mirrored uh, piece of glass. Uh, it's quite dull at the moment uh, but as you can see the image is quite clear as we move around and it gives you a pretty good idea of the image that you're going to take. If the sun's at the side of you or to the front it tends to be a bit bright uh, but certainly with the sun behind you you get a really clear image. This is only available in portrait and on some of the cameras you've got uh, a second uh, image screen on the side to allow you to take portrait images but as you can see it's pretty good. Uh, on the side we have the shutter release up, down, up and down do release, does release the shutter. Uh, so you could do double exposures, even triple expo exposures if you wanted to. Uh, but if you take a photo you must remember to obviously wind the film on and that's what you do with that, uh, uh, that, that rotary lever there. The film winds on only goes in one direction so you, you can't accidentally 
roll this in the opposite direction to how it's supposed to go. Uh, also on the sides here you have the releases for uh, opening the back to, uh, to put new film in. In order to load film into the camera, first of all you pull up on the uh, film wind-on lever and then you release these eye clasps here, one on the side and one on the top and then you could just pull the, uh, the inner from the outer, put that to one side and then as you can see here it says this camera takes number two brownie film otherwise known as the 120 and there we have a spool, a take up spool and you put your roll of 120 film in there and it's got a spring clamp there and then you wind your film round here round there and into this spool um, make sure it's taut and once you've got your film secured you then pop it back in there like that press down and locate the roll locate the eyes and then you're ready to go just make sure it's, it's clicked in and then we're all ready to go I have tested a roller film through this a uh, couple of days ago and I'll show you that uh, film at the end and some examples um, it was a dull day but uh, I'll go through that in a while Now we've looked at uh, the functions of the camera and how to uh, operate it. Uh, time's come to just run a roll of film through. Uh, so what I've done is I've uh, got a few rolls of um, Ilford HP5 plus uh, 400 ASA film. Uh, it's expired film, it expired in uh, about 2006 so I suppose it's not the ideal film to put through a camera for a first test but um, that's what I've decided and as it was a very dull day I decided the extra speed uh, would um, compensate in some way for the uh, 1/30th of a shutter speed shutter um, so yeah I've, I've put the uh, roller film through I didn't film any of that um, because as I say it was dull and it was getting a bit rainy as well so uh, I decided to do that fairly quickly I've developed the uh, film in Rodinal, which again isn't the ideal developer for um, uh, high speed film, but nonetheless I do get some decent results with it. Close focusing distance is 8 feet, anything 8 feet and uh, to infinity would be sharp. Um, anything closer than that, let's say to 6 feet, they say in the brochure, will be suitably sharp. And I think closer than that will be out of focus. You can get uh, a portrait, portrait lens adapter to put on the front of the uh, uh, aperture here and that will allow you to get to three and a half feet where things will be sharp. I think sharp is a relative um, uh, word to use for these lenses although looking at the images I've shot they're not too bad um, but what you've got to remember is that when these uh, films were developed they were sort of contact printed uh, and if you look at those size of images they are quite sharp. Um, if you want to blow the uh, images up to anything more than that you will see a lot of softness there. Right, one more thing before I get into showing you the images and that's how much fun these cameras are to use. They're not going to give you the sharpest images in the world, but it's just the process. Uh, the taking of the image with what's going on for a 100 year old camera now. Um, and the process of taking the shot, loading the film, taking the shot, developing it, and then the joy of seeing what sort of image you're going to get, whether it's sharp, whether it's soft, uh, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just the joy of using these cameras uh, and then there's the cost I bought this camera 
in what I must say is very good condition. The only little bit of rust is on these uh, eye clasps. Uh, the interior, as you've seen uh, previously in the video, is very, very good. The leather, leatherette rather, is, is very good condition. Uh, the embossing is all undamaged. There's just a little, um, little rub on the leatherette on the corner, uh, on one of the corners, but that's no problem. Uh, so how much did this camera cost? Uh, £4.50 plus a few quid for delivery. Uh, I did buy this off eBay. Um, there's lots and lots on there of different versions of um, uh, these box cameras, most of them are called brownies, this one wasn't uh, at the time um, and you can pick them up in various states of disrepair um, I've seen them going for £50 in horrendous state which never sell um, but you can pick them up between 10 and 20 for a really good one I was fortunate in getting this one at the price I did um, I've got no complaints, I loved using it and I will be putting some colour film through soon, so there'll be a part two of this uh, uh, series coming up um, within the next two or three weeks, I hope. Um, but anyway, uh, I just thought I'd add that last little um, uh, piece on this camera and how much they are to buy. So anyway, without further ado, which is what most of you have been waiting for, I suppose, here's a look at the images. Hi, all the image you see here was shot on Ilford HP5 Plus and developed in Rodinal OnePlus 50. Then they were scanned using an Epson V550 scanner uh, and then there was very little editing, uh, just a little adjustment of contrast. Some of the images are a little bit underexposed but I'm putting that down to the age of the film. Uh, most of the images show a lot of sharpness um, but there's a little bit of softness as well especially towards the edges and some of them are a bit grainy but again that's down to the film. Uh, if you like what you see please like and subscribe there's lots more to come uh, and thanks for watching.